everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the introduction to Aspen Discovery webinar. My name is Jessica Zaro, and I am the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator here at Bywater Solutions. I am joined with Mark Noble, who is the developer for Aspen Discovery, along with Adam Brooks, who is the West Coast Sales Consultant, and Josh Barron, who is our East Coast Sales Consultant. Um, I'll let them do their quick hellos. Hi, hey everyone. This is Mark Noble. Um, like Jesse said, I'm the Aspen Discovery Team Lead at Bywater Solutions and uh, Primary Developer. Hi, I'm Adam Brooks. I'm the West Coast and International Sales Consultant for Bywater Solutions. Hey everyone, uh, this is Josh. I do all of the East Coast uh, sales uh, here at Bywater. Thank you so much. Um, for today's presentation, um, please use the chat box um, or the question and answer box. If you have any questions along the way, um, we'll be monitoring those and answering them live. Um, we'll be taking you through a presentation um, of Aspen, talking a little bit about the history in the beginning, doing a, a, a tour of Aspen itself, what it will look like for your patrons, um, and then uh, we'll do a presentation on the administration functions, and then we will have time at the end uh, for Q&A. Um, so if there's anything that you have questions about, please feel free to ask it. So first, we'll give just a quick brief history about Aspen Discovery. Um, Aspen grew out of uh, Viewfind, which was um, a product that Villanova developed. Um, many years ago and out of that was a forked version of pica which um, i will share my funny story with you instead of saying forked i said piked i mixed forked and piked with pica <laughs> um, and that was maintained by marmot for years um, mark worked at marmot as well um, and uh, just a few years ago mark has um, developed aspen discovery off of that uh, pica um, interface and there's been a ton of enhancements um, over the the last few years um, that really makes Aspen stand out. Um, some of those things include um, enhanced relevancy uh, based on focus groups and usability um, groups that um, they have worked with, the ease of use with e-content so your patrons do not have to log into multiple interfaces, uh, integration with digital archives, um, providing them with access to uh, much more than just your catalog. Um, enrichment, which is so crucial in, in, in today's times where um, they wanna explore different um, authors and subjects and titles. And then of course, um, ferberization or um, the grouping together of records, which really, really um, provides um, an easy interface for your patrons to find exactly what they're looking for. At Bywater Solutions, um, we are an open source um, support company, meaning we provide hosting um, for open source products, uh, implementation of the open source product, um, and then support um, of that product, ongoing support, upgrades, um, any type of training, and then development of that product. Um, Mark works um, very closely and um, with our partners to develop um, ideas that come out of um, suggestions from staff members, from patrons, and so on. So um, constantly updating things in the system. And, and Mark will talk a little bit about releases and you'll see how the release notes are integrated into Aspen itself. So you're always um, up to date. The difference between um, proprietary uh, providers and the open source community, um, a lot of times there's much more of a slower development phase um, and generally delayed um, release cycles. With open source, you have continuous integration um, and really innovative um, ideas that come out of what librarians and, and staff members want to see within the system. Um, it, a, a great one that we discussed yesterday was an idea out of integration of those events within um, 
the Aspen Discovery platform itself. That way your patrons can see what events are going on. So if I search for sewing and there's a sewing class going on, that will pop up um, so I'm alerted about it. Not just looking for maybe a, a quick tutorial or a book on it, but I can also you know attend that event. So just one of the things that makes the community so critical um, for open source. Thanks, Chris. So as we talk about development for Aspen, we're, we're kind of guided by really five primary goals. So first goal is, is maximizing the usage of all of our library materials. So like Jesse said, whether it's our physical materials that are traditionally presented in a catalog and search interface, um, whether it's the e-content, so OverDrive, RV Digital, um, Hoopla, all of that, that great e-content that we're buying, we also, like Jesse was saying, um, want to integrate those events, want to integrate our digital archives, because we've got a lot of great materials that we're spending a lot of money on that typically patrons have a really, really hard time finding, and we want to make sure that patrons can find those easily. Um, next goal is complete integration. So really, we don't want to give patrons a substandard interface, um, so we know that this is a lot of patrons primary interface with the library um, from an online standpoint um, we don't want to lose functionality so um, we have complete integrations with ILS e-content providers wherever possible so some e-content providers don't give us the tools we need um, to do a complete integration but where we've got them Everything that you can do in the underlying platform, you can do within Aspen. So whether that's placing holds, freezing holds, um, renewing titles, everything that you can do, we want to be able to do. Right now, um, really pretty much any ILS works. Um, so whether you're on Koha, Symphony, Horizon, um, Sierra, uh, we have an integration um, with the ILS to make it a seamless experience for the patron. Um, we don't want to send people off to um, a different website. Um, as well as e-content providers. So right now we have full integrations with Overdrive, Hoopla, RB Digital, Cloud Library. Um, then we want to make it easy to use. So I've been lucky over the last 10 years that I've been working on this product um, in various incarnations to sit down with really hundreds of, of patrons one-on-one uh, -on -one to do usability studies um, to figure out what makes it easy for them, what's hard, um, and simplify things. And, and the changes we've made are both big and small. So um, sometimes it's just a little wording change and sometimes it's adding entirely new functionality to, to help use of use. Um, and then the next goal, um, just we know every single library is different. So whether that's two members of the same consortium, whether it's two different libraries across the country, um, every library is a little bit different. So since this is kind of a primary interface for a lot of patrons, we wanna make sure that Aspen is branded to you um, using your colors, using your um, logos, so it really looks like your, your site. Um, we also want to do little things like um, there's a bunch of, of facets. So we've got over 30, somewhere between 30 and 40 different facets um, that are customizable by, by libraries. So you can really tune it to the way your patrons, to the way your librarians catalog and the way your patrons search um, and the information that's valuable to them. And then the last goal that we probably don't have a slide for is just making sure that it's affordable. Um, and, and that's really a, a primary goal for us too, is to make sure that we're not draining your, your budget. So we wanna make sure that we don't have additional special charges for um, things like those e-content integrations. So pretty much everything you see today is included. Um, you don't have to worry about a special charge for digital archive integration or, or e-content integration. It's, it's all included in that, that support uh, price we charge. Okay, thanks, Mark. So what we'll do now is we will jump over to give you a quick tour of Aspen. Again, um, if you have questions at any time, please uh, feel free to use the chat box. 
um, or the Q&A box. Okay, so uh, what you will see right here is um, a customized version of uh, Aspen Discovery. We have a great discovery layer here that is connected to one of our Koha systems um, that's set up. So this is using our Koha ILS to bring in our uh, patron and catalog information uh, so we can give you the best uh, demo that we have. You'll notice that we do have a nice little message up top alerting our users that the buildings are closed um, until, um, you know, uh, April 24th, um, and we have built in these links that provides um, direct access to ebooks and audiobooks, um, promoting that while the library is closed. Aspen can tie in um, your colors, your look, your feel, your logos, um, and this can also be customized by consortia. Um, one of our partners, Click, who is um, a, a larger consortium out in Colorado, um, they have about 118 libraries um, and they have uh, beautiful um, interfaces uh, customized for each one of their locations. So their public libraries, their school libraries, their you know, academic libraries can each have their own branded page. Still pulling from that entire discovery system, but um, a customized look by consortia, which is really nice um, for each one of your users. You'll notice right on this front page, our users can see um, available ebooks and e audio books that we have with a crisp look of those um, cover images that are populating up. Two ways for them to look at them they can see the covers directly, they can click on grid, which will give them um, more of a grid look. However, they prefer, they can of course switch that back and forth. Um, one of my favorite features about Aspen Discovery as a patron um, is the integration of New York Times bestsellers. Um, there's a great API that brings in the um, current New York Times sellers list and it will go through and look for um, those titles that you have in your collection. So you'll notice here some of the different um, spotlights that are highlighted. Um, one of them is our, our New York Times. So it will pull out any of the um, particular titles that we do have available in our collection. So this is a nice way to highlight some of those different lists. You can see we have one for fiction and nonfiction and um, kids series, business. You can add in as many as you wanna highlight in the collection. So just a really nice way to integrate things into um, your library's discovery system. You'll see here one for Nashville. Um, it, it seems like just yesterday we were in Nashville for the Public Library Association Conference. Mark quickly threw together this spotlight, which would highlight certain titles that we had from and about Nashville. So, you know, no matter what's going on um, in the world, in your community, um, on your campus, you can pull this information in quickly um, um, in the system and, and we'll show you how just to set one of those up and, and how easy those are. So let's talk about the search um, in the Aspen Discovery System. When I come in and I begin my process to either look for a keyword search or a title search or a series search, whatever I'm looking for in the system, um, one of the key features of Aspen Discovery is the relevancy. As Mark mentioned, they've done um, hundreds of focus groups and usability um, surveys to make sure that when Aspen brings back those results, um, it's bringing back the most relevant results in the system. So you'll see here, I typed in Gone Girl and that starts populating a list. So it gives me some predictive text, um, trying to predict what I'm looking for um, over here on the right-hand side, I can determine if I want to do a keyword search um, or if I hit that drop down, I can select either by title, series, author, or subject. Um, and then I have a final drop down here, which actually lets me drill down by the library catalog itself. Um, I can look in lists. Um, I can actually index and look through my website, so it'll search for that. Um, or for archives itself. So you can drill down if you want or just search the entire library catalog for all things. There's an advanced search as well and, and we'll go into a little more detail about that in a few. 
once I hit go, the system will bring back a list of results. And you'll notice how quickly those results come back. I can see on the left hand side, I do have my facets. There's about 30 facets that you can have populated and viewable right on this page. Um, so your user can easily drill down if they're looking for e-content. It will pull in the providers that um, you have integrated in your system. If I'm looking for a particular um, accelerated reader level, um, I can come in and quickly pull up that information. Um, accelerated reader information is pulled in with a weekly feed from Renaissance Learning. Um, there are many more, but some of the others I always like to highlight. Uh, language, if you have multiple languages within your library, you can select if you have a, a Spanish collection that um, is highly circulated. Of course, you know, you want to be able to let them drill down. So this is just a nice way to let your users kind of narrow in on their results. On the center of the screen, you're going to see your detailed view of the record. So right up top, the user can quickly determine what they want. Are they looking for print? Are they looking for an ebook or an e-audio book or movies? They can even drill down and, and look at things that are available right now, meaning I can check them out, or things that are available online right now. And again, I think this one is just one of the best highlights for me. You know, so many times I would go into uh, the catalog, I'd do a search and, you know, you would see things that are already checked out. This is a great way to say, you know, just show me what's available online right now. As I scroll through, um, now I can start seeing my results. And we're gonna talk about one of the first um, big um, things for Aspen Discovery, which is ferberization. Um, and it's funny, we just had earlier this week, we had somebody ask about um, watching um, and, and looking at um, ferberization and what that means. I always say it's the, the grouping together of the um, material for a particular uh, record. So you can see rather than seeing an individual record for the book, for the audio version, for the e-audio version, and then for the ebook version, it's grouped together. So making it very simple for the patron to say, you know, I feel like reading um, the ebook today. So as long as they are authenticated and logged in, they can quickly and easily check that ebook out. So it's just a nice way that they can see all of that information in one. Now you'll notice right away, I can hit this show addition. This will give me a little bit more information about um, this particular uh, title. Um, if I come down below, um, you can see that same information for the ebook and e-audio integration uh, within the system. So it's just really nice that you can see all of that information right away. Here you can see there's also a quick copy view. So this will show me the copies that are currently available in the, um, in the library. So you can see that right away. If I scroll down just a little bit further um, to the bottom of this record, I can see a summary um, of this particular title. And then I have three quick boxes. I can hit this more info, which will take me into the, um, uh, a larger detailed view of the record, I can add a review or add it to a list uh, of, of mine. So let's hit that more information. Um, and this will take us in where we can see a little more information about this um, per title. Um, as we scroll through, we can see uh, ratings over here on the left hand side. Um, Patrons can rate titles. Um, if you turn rating on, this will allow them to place up to a five-star rating. Once ratings are essentially, um, you know, uh, left in the system, it will start giving you recommendations. So if I rate Gone Girl, depending on my um, average rating for it, it will start providing recommendations based on what I like to read. So again, giving your patron just one more option um, for that information. As I scroll down a little bit further, we can see that description again, and we can also see more like this. So this will tell us if we like Gone Girl, other titles that come in um, 
that are very similar to this. And so the user can just quickly scroll through, look at some of those other suggested titles, and then click and drill in for those. As we scroll down a little bit further in this particular record, um, I can see things like subject headings where I can drill down and, and move into those subjects, a little more details about this particular record. And then if you do have a subscription with Novelist Select, um, this is where the integration will take place. You'll be able to see um, suggestions for this particular book um, from similar titles. And then of course, if I scroll down a little bit further, similar authors. So I can see other authors if I like um, this particular author, I can see other authors that I might find um, just as intriguing. If you want, you can even turn on reviews from Goodreads. So a lot of our patrons are, are looking through Goodreads, sharing with their friends, their family members, um, and this just gives us a nice way to kind of bring that integration in as well. The last option we have down here is our staff view. Um, this allows us to see some information about grouping, um, cover images, uh, solar is the search mechanism that um, Aspen is using, and then I can just see all of that information down below. Okay, now you'll notice the user can easily um, search um, to the next result here or return to the search results in the system. Uh, let's talk about a few different um, ways when users are searching in the system, things that always pop to the top of my head that I can remember um, that were always pinpoints. Um, sometimes, you know, users will come in and they'll be either, you know, typing a little bit too quickly or maybe the last name of the author that they are um, looking for uh, is um, has a trickier last name. Um, if I come in here and I spell that name wrong, it will provide um, a spelling correction for me. So you'll see I hit Harlan Coben with an E-N, um, an A-N rather than an E-N. So it, it fixes it for me and it tells me that it's showing results for um, Harlan Coben with an E-N, and then it says well, right below, search instead for Harlan Coben. So, um, you know, there's nice, very similar to the way Google handles it, where it'll show you those results, but gives them the option to search instead for um, what they've typed in. So again, now I can come in, see this information, and then of course, drill right down um, and look at that information. Um, just making it very easy for your user uh, to come in. Another feature I always like to talk about since we're in um, Harlan Coben now is series information. Um, so if it ties into a series, the user will be able to see that information as well. So just another way for them to uh, tie in that information um, in the system. Um, I'm going to log in now to my account. Um, maybe I'm ready to place a hold on something or perhaps I want to check an ebook out um, in the collection. There are um, all of the major ebook providers, Overdrive, Recorded Book, um, Cloud Library, Hoopla, um, has integration within the Aspen Discovery platform. So if your user logs into the system and your library um, subscribes to one of those um, e-content providers, they will be able to view any of the information that they have checked out in the system. So you can see here, I have five titles checked out and one title on hold. So when I click on my checked out titles over here on the left-hand side, um, I can see all of those that I have checked out, some um, from RB Digital, um, some from, um, print collections and so on. So I can actually scroll through and see what I have physically checked out. Um, and then of course, what I have um, from RB Digital or one of my other e-content providers. So just a really nice way to view all of that information in one place. I have to share this right away because this is again, um, a really nice feature. If you have reading history turned on, 
Um, this is not for anyone who anonymizes, but if you retain reading history for your patrons or provide the option for them to keep their reading history by giving them the choice, um, they can actually come in and see both print and e-content for what they've read. So that's both print and e-content. Really, really nice. Um, so they can come in here, they can see what they've checked out in the past um, and, and view that information here all in one location. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do that um, Harlan Coben search again. And this time we're gonna check out a um, e-content um, something from my e-content collection. So let's say I, I really like reading from one of the particular um, providers. I can come in and I can drill down. I can place a hold on either one of these items. So if I hit that place a hold, it will populate a um, view here where it will default to the main branch, um, which is my home location. Um, I could also hit the drop down menu if I, um, you know, I'm, maybe I'm visiting my sister and she lives closer to the north branch. I could select that um, and submit my hold request. Once I submit that request, it will actually let me know that the hold has been placed successfully and that I am number one in the queue. Um, down below, it will let me know once it arrives, I will be notified um, in the system. I'm gonna do another um, search again. And this time we're going to um, check something out uh, via the e-content collection. So again, I'm gonna hit that RB Digital and, and just drill down. And now you'll see here, I am just viewing um, some of the e-content and maybe I wanna say, show me what's just available now. And now I can, I can drill down. So you'll see here some of my providers, I have both um, RB Digital and Cloud Library. And as I scroll through, I can see a little bit more of that information. Um, one thing to highlight here is this explore more section. You'll notice it's providing suggestions based on the search that I did in the system. Um, so I can see a, a list here um, from the New York Times bestsellers, um, a YA book list, um, something that's linking me out to um, an archive and so on. So again, um, really great ways to integrate other things than just the records in your collection. Once I find the title that I'm looking for, I can click on that check out from RB Digital. Um, it will give me a pop-up letting me know if the checkout was successful or not. Um, I can see right away that the, the um, checkout was successful. I can either close this out or view the checkout immediately. It will take me to my um, checked out section where I can come in here and of course I can open it in RB Digital. I could pull up my the app on my phone and, and read it there or I can say you know open in RB Digital and quickly begin that process of, of reading that title. So lots of ways. Your user can also renew if renew is available and then of course return now um, which would return that title um, directly in back to RB Digital. So just some really nice ways um, to keep them in one location so they don't have to remember to log in to multiple platforms. Everything can be done uh, in one location. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, large series titles and, and searching for things. Um, I always like to do the Harry Potter search because, um, you know, at times it becomes difficult for users to find exactly what they're looking for. Sometimes they'll get different results than a Harry Potter um, title in the series. You know, they may get something um, like that's contained to like one of the films, or maybe they're going to get something for um, a source book or um, a magic cookbook, you know, whatever it may be that ties into Harry Potter. But the one thing I really like about um, this is, I can see this series information right away. Um, I can see if there are multiple copies, which in most cases you'll, you'll have multiple copies of this title in your collection. Um, but now I can come in here, I can click on that um, series information and it will take me directly into the Harry Potter series so I can see a little more 
of that information. And it's just a, a really nice way for the user to come in and, um, and look at that information. So now I can scroll through just by looking at that series information and see each one in there, you know, in the correct order. Oh, this is just so nice. Okay. Um, so lots of lots of good features there for the user. Maybe they're new to a series. Somebody suggested it to them, um, and they can see that information right away. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit more about the user interface. So we talked about searching. We've placed a hold. We've checked something out. Um, let's highlight some of the other features that we have in our um, account information. So over on the left-hand side, we talked about our checked out items. Um, titles on hold will show us the information that we have in the collection so I can see the, the physical material, if I have anything on hold from one of my e-content providers. Um, the next thing we can add in is our reading history. So again, um, depending on your ILS, you have your option to anonymize, which would retain the statistic, but remove the user's um, information, um, retaining the reading history, or giving the option to choose themselves. So right now, I have my reading history turned on. However, I can either delete it or stop recording my reading history. If I select that, um, it gives me an option telling me that I'm going to opt out of reading history. Um, I click that OK, and that will take me back to this screen. So your users will also see this if they have never opted in uh, to retaining their reading history. So what this allows me to do is I can come in here, I can click start recording my reading history, and then that will take me to the screen again where I can see all of that information. So this is a nice option to provide to your patrons if you wanna highlight certain things um, for them to do um, in the system. The next thing will be my fines and messages. So this will tell me right away if I have any types of fines or fees. Um, there is integration with PayPal. So um, the user can select what they want to pay um, and then go through the process of paying via PayPal, PayPal credit, or using a debit or credit card to make their payment. Um, if I had multiple charges here, I could select the charge I wanted to pay or by selecting the checkbox up top, which would allow me to pay all of that information. Um, materials requested. Um, this is very similar to like a purchase suggestion. So the user can come in here, submit a new material request, and then it will give them a form um, and um, go through that information so you can see that. So they can come in, title, author, additional information, and then they can submit that request, which will go back to um, the staff side of their ILS. Um, titles you rated. So when we were looking at Gone Girl earlier and we saw that information, um, we had a couple things that were rated. So you can see here, I have quite a few things um, that have been rated in the system. They have various different ratings, you know, anything from one to five stars. Once I start that process, again, Aspen will give me recommendations based on those ratings. Um, so this is just a nice way, one more thing that you can provide to, to your patrons. You'll see right underneath that titles you rated, that recommended for you. Um, now once I click on that, I can see, again, a few more titles um, that have been recommended. I do have a child, so that's why you see a, very, a varying number of children books and, um, and, and adult uh, in our collection. All right, let's talk about some account settings. So the first one I always like to talk about is my preference. My preference, of course, is going to be, you know, what's my home library? Do I have an alternate, you know, a good one for me is when, before I worked at Bywater and I was working at a consortia, you know, I'd commute about 45 minutes um, to and from work. And one of the branches was right by my location of where I worked. And so um, it was a nice way for me to um, pick something up there on the way home um, rather than going to my a closer location at home. Uh, contact information. This allows your user to update any type of um, email, phone number, address, whatever it may be um, in the system, and then that will go back to uh, the staff side. 
any type of messaging settings. Again, I'm using a, a ILS connection to Koha. So this is pulling in my Koha messaging settings so I can see that information in the system, change any type of proactive um, message that I'm getting. The next thing here is our linked accounts. Um, and this will show me um, just some information um, if, if I want to link to my child or my spouse, perhaps I can link to another account. This is an option you can turn on and off in the system. So if you don't want to give your patrons the option to link in their accounts, you can absolutely turn that on or off. The final thing here is my lists, and this allows your user to create a list in the system. So maybe um, they're doing a DIY project and they wanna throw some titles in there, or um, they are working with their child on learning a new language, you know, whatever it may be, they can come in here and create a list in the system. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about some of the integrations um, that, go outside of just your typical MARC record. So the first one I wanna talk about um, is, is going to be like highlighting things in your collection. And I always use this one as an example because our when I worked at the library, our library subscribed to Freegal, but it was never really utilized the way we felt it should have been. And I think this is a great way to highlight it in your, your collection. So here you see, I just did a search for music and this brings a placard right to the top and it highlights Freegal music. You can see that you can click out right away and, and view that information in the system. So just a great way to highlight certain things. Another example is mangled languages. So like if somebody searched for language, you could highlight this information in there. Um, anything that you really want to grab the attention of your users. Another nice one is, um, you know, highlighting things in your website. So you can index uh, your website and have that be searchable in the um, Aspen Discovery platform. So that allows me to go in and see some information in the system. Um, so as I scroll through, you'll notice I get the explore more, which will allow me to go in and you'll see here, um, I have a link for meeting rooms. And what that'll do is that will take me right out to the website where I can go in and essentially get a meeting room reserved. So, you know, integration with your website is really nice that you can tie in things that are essentially non-traditional um, in the system. Okay, I am going to um, pause for a minute and I am going to switch views. Um, Mark is going to essentially um, show you what the administrative side um, of Aspen looks like now. Thanks, Jesse. Share screen here. All right, so um, we've had some questions on this already, so, um, but the administrative area within Aspen is built into the main site. So you log in with your regular um, credentials uh, and you can give people permissions to, uh, to administer various aspects of Aspen. So we, we've got a pretty robust permissioning system where you can um, do a bunch of different things. Um, obviously we can't go through the entire admin interface today. Um, there's just not enough time. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of cover some highlights. So some of the things that we have um, are some different reports so we can see um, how much usage Aspen is getting. So we can see how many page views there are, um, kind of this month, last month, um, all time, how many different covers we're showing, how many different searches we're doing. Um, and search is broken up to different uh, areas. So are we searching specifically lists? Are we specific searching the main catalog? Are we searching our archives? Um, administrators can easily do things like add new categories to the homepage. So because we want patrons to be able to, or we want librarians to be able to customize this um, to react to different times, different holidays, um, an increased usage of audiobooks. Um, so we make it really easy to do that. So let me just show you that real quick. So if we look at our available e-audio, 
and we wanted to maybe create a historical fiction um, category. So we just click on our search, um, and then we can do additional uh, filters. So let's just say we're going to add historical fiction. If we wanted to, we can certainly do multiple. Um, so if we wanted um, both fiction historical and uh, historical fiction, so no matter how we catalog it, we want to include both of those, we can apply those filters. And then because I'm logged in with a staff account, I can go down here to the bottom of the search results and say add to browse. I just need to give it a, uh, a category name. So we'll call that historical fiction and we're going to add this to our um, available e-audio. So we'll create that category. And now when we go to the home page, and we click on our available e-audio, where did I add it? Oh, I added it to a different category. Sorry, let me do that one more time. I've got two that are named about the same thing. So here's our uh, available eAudio main. We're going to create that category. And I added it. Oh, there we go. There's our historical fiction eAudio. We can also choose uh, to resort those. So if we go into our uh, browse category configuration, um, and this is where we can set up different configurations within a consortium. So if you want all of your public libraries to um, have a certain set of, of browse categories in all of your academics to have a different one. Um, or if you're a school district, you could have the elementary schools have one set and the uh, middle schools and high schools have a different set. Um, here we can edit our available e-audio and we can just kind of drag and drop those up and down. So if we wanted to um, alphabetize them, we could do that. Um, we also have the ability to change a lot of the settings. So the goal really is to have all of these settings customizable um, by the administrator. So you don't really need to, to come talk to us for almost every um, change that you want to make. We're certainly ha happy to help you if you like, but we're, we don't have to do things for you. Um, so if we wanted to do things like disable our holds and maybe change the date of the uh, of the closure. So maybe we say that um, we now know that we're going to be closed until the 30th um, and we no longer want to show holds. So we can go down to the hold section and say don't show that hold button anymore. And now if we do a search um, we'll see that the hold button is gone, but we do still get the, the hold options for our online materials. So depending on what you're doing, if you're not uh, taking holds during your closure, um, you could just turn them off temporarily. Um, and you can do that easily then without changing any of the settings within the ILS. Um, and we can see that our, our note up at the top has been changed. Um, we also offer the ability to do spotlights. So this is kind of a way to integrate your website with the catalog a little bit more. Um, so if you wanted to, let's go back to browsing the catalog and let's grab our historical uh, fiction again and just click on that to get our results. So if we wanted to promote this historical fiction um, within uh, our website, we can create what's called a spotlight. So we can just say create spotlight 
we're just going to call this historical fiction on e-audio. We'll create that spotlight. And this gives us a widget that can be embedded into our website. Um, so we've got about five different ways we can configure this. Um, so if we edit that, we can change, for example, um, do we show the current title? How many titles should be shown? We can change the style so we can make this just a single title um, that automatically rotates and we won't show the title. Um, we'll leave the size as medium. Um, and we'll just save those changes. And then we can see we've got a whole new uh, um, display and it'll rotate through those. Um, and these can all be embedded on your website with a simple iframe. Um, we found that that's kind of the, the easiest way for most people to be able to embed them. So um, nice and easy for people to do. Um, there's lots and lots of other functionality. Um, so let's just look at some other common things. So uh, we have the ability to upload covers. So if I wanted to um, upload a cover for like this fishing book, I can go into the staff view and, and with the proper permissions now, I can go into the staff view, I can just select upload cover, select my cover, and select the, the cover that I, I uh, scanned or downloaded um, from the publisher. We can upload that. And that is automatically replaced um, when we upload. And there's a bunch of things you can do like that. So you can make grouping adjustments. Um, you can upload PDFs. So if this is, um, say, a local history um, book that um, the library has permissions to uh, have a, a PDF version of, um, you can upload that PDF version so that it's, it can be downloaded. Um, if you've got government docs um, that you have cataloged and want to provide both a, an online accessible version as well as the version within the library, um, people are doing it with their uh, file folders. Um, so if you've got a, a vertical cabinet with, with uh, information and want to scan that all in um, and attach it to your mark record, you could. Um, other things we have, we've got, um, so the release notes are all shown within um, Aspen, so you can easily see what changes have been made. Um, so this is our last kind of major release um, that went out this week. Um, and we can see we've got a bunch of different changes made. Um, so the biggest one was event calendar integration, um, which allows libraries to see uh, or patrons to see events within um, the search results uh, within that Explore More, more bar. Uh, and we have the ability to directly submit tickets if, uh, um, if you're uh, supported by Bywater. Um, so there's been a bunch of questions, so I'll stop there and we're happy to answer specific questions. Um, the first couple of questions were related to um, how we handle volumes. Um, so there's a couple of different ways we can do volumes. So um, the, I'm gonna pull up Pueblo's interface. Um, and if we search for manga, um, we have the ability to treat, to force item level holds on um, specific volumes. So in this case, when we go to place a hold on Blackbird, it will, oops, I am not logged in with a proper, patron, Now when we place a hold, we'll be asked for which item we want to do. So that's not quite volumes, um, but that's what they're doing. Um, for other 
um, ILSs depending on how uh, volumes work. So there's volume hold development in or in active development for Koha now. Um, Sierra has volumes. So if we go to Arlington site, um, they do have volumes. It will prompt you for which volume you want to place a hold on. Um, so here, oh, they've got all of their holds turned off, which makes it a little harder to show right now. But basically, you would be prompted for which volume you want to see. Um, and it will work much like that with the Koha uh, integration. Um, there is another question about um, the iframe code and whether that is the same as PICA. It is the same, um, so it's handled very much the same as it was uh, in PICA. So, um, event vendors that are supported currently. So, we are currently supporting uh, Library Calendar from Library Market, uh, and we're happy to explore additional ones. That was just the, the first need that. Um, we had. You can see that at Uinta Library. If anybody wants to see that, that is live today. So if we did a search for like story time, we can see books about story time and then we see some events. Um, so here are some of their online events that uh, people have. Um, and we can also view a, a complete list of those. So there's a list of events here. So we've got various story times that are upcoming. Yoga story times um, will be available once the library is open again. Um, then there was a question about does Aspen work with different users' permissions? Um, so if users don't have permissions to view the archives, um, we haven't seen that specific use case before. Um, so I think we'd need to talk about disabling specific functionality for certain users. Um, we have the ability to, like the links in the sidebar here are customizable. Um, those can be customized for whether or not a user is logged in or not. Um, if you're doing like patron type restrictions, we, we'd need to talk and kind of see what what your exact uh, needs were. Um, and there's a question about the website indexing um, and if that's working similar to the resource integration where consortia, um, within a consortia, each individual library um, can index their own website, that's correct. So if you're part of a 70 or 100 or more member consortium, you don't have to see all of the websites within your catalog. So, um, Then there's a question about holds being placed at the item level. Um, okay, and the ability to place a hold at, at the level of an expression or work or a bib level hold. Um, so this actually does depend a lot. So. Let's go back here to our Harry Potter. Well, let's first re-enable holds. Um, so to show the holds, we need to uh, be able to place holds. Uh, so let's search for like Pride and Prejudice. Um, so by default, um, let's see, I'm not seeing one with multiple. So if there were multiple editions, um, let's see if I can find one real quick. Apologies. Um, Try Downton Abbey, maybe. Okay. Oh, I see. Well, additions, if you're looking for multi-levels, like I think I have that one um, okay. with multiple volumes. Let's look at Pueblo. So if we looked for Pride and Prejudice generally has multiple editions. So I, the, 
short answer before I, I do the long answer is we're going to do what the ILS allows us to do. So none of the ILSs that I am aware of allow you to place a work level hold to say, hey, of these books, I've got three. Please place a hold on all three of them, but give me whatever item comes in first. Um, we haven't found um, an ILS that does that yet. Once they do, then we'll do it. Um, otherwise, what we do is we are by default placing bib level holds. Um, that is the default for most ILSs. Um, we do have the ability to do item level holds if um, you want to, or for example, with the uh, um, graphic novels, um, it, it's a patron service to be able to say, yes, place item level holds on these because I don't want to randomly get one of 20 different uh, volumes. I want to make sure that I get get the first edition and then the second and then the third. Um, and that depends a little bit on your cataloging. What we are going to do though with these is sort them um, in order to try to get patrons a copy the quickest. So we're gonna look at a combination of availability, um, local holdings, as well as uh, number of holds. Um, so if something is not available, we're gonna pick the record with the shortest uh, hold queue. Um, so. Goal is always to get patrons a copy the quickest. Um, accessibility features for people with disabilities. Um, that's a huge question <laughs> in and of itself. So um, we have not done specific accessibility studies um, in, in terms of um, having other companies review it and that kind of thing. Um, we did, uh, it all kind of depends on what disabilities you're talking. Um, so the system itself is designed to be accessible um, and we're certainly looking at the, the basic accessibility uh, um, requirements, but uh, I need more information on, on more specific uh, disabilities. Um, viewing notices from the library in their online account. Um, this again kind of depends on the ILS. Um, so most ILSs um, do allow notices to be shown. Um, so it just depends on the ILS um, and whether or not we can get that information. Um, then there was a question about can staff be assigned different permissions in admin mode and yes, they can. We've got about 10 different uh, administration kind of roles right now um, that are available um, and those are changed and added to as necessary as we add additional functionality. Okay, Mark, we have one last question in the chat about um, item volume level holds and I think mm -hmm. there's just some confusion and that there is volume level holds in Aspen. Yeah and it it just depends on the ILS functionality so. It sounds like they're coming from Sierra so yes and and Ar Arlington Public Library is currently using Aspen Discovery and, and Sierra is their uh, ILS so. Yep. You, you can is, use Aspen with volume level holds. Yep. Uh, and then there was another question about can patrons set up to receive notices when new materials on their favorite titles, authors, or subject arrives? That's functionality that we have in the queue, but it's not, uh, not implemented yet. Um, and then there was a question about, um, is the design responsive and adapts to um, the device it's being on, viewed on? And yes, it is a uh, responsive design. It works great on um, desktops, tablets, phones. Um, we do do a variety of things to uh, change how things um, are shown, uh, changed the layout slightly, um, but it, it is a responsive design. And thanks for asking, that's one of the things we always forget because I think we assume now it's a given, but 
we forget that there are vendors that don't have accessible catalogs out there. So. Well, wonderful. Thank you. There are so many great questions uh, today. Um, Oh, looks, we have another one. Can highlighted title lists um, searched by date added? I can highlighted title lists searched <laughs> um, by date. So, yeah, if you've created lists, um, can you search for them and then sort by date added? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I honestly forget. <laughs> um, let's just check real quick. I think if we do, let's do a search for lists. Uh, no, not yet, but that is certainly functionality that we could add. Um, and probably what we would want in addition to date added would be the date that it was uh, last revised as well. So, yep. Put that in the development queue. And, and in terms of development, so as Jesse said, um, part of the advantage of open source is we are able to have a little bit um, quicker release cycles. Um, so we are generally developing and, and deploying every week to two weeks. Um, and it kind of depends on uh, the functionality being developed. Um, so we want to make sure that we're getting um, releases out to people as quickly as possible. Um, so it's going to be a lot more, a uh, lot more frequent, frequent, bleh, frequent releases of smaller functionality. So it's more of a, here's one feature you can choose to turn it on or not. And then on to the next thing, as well as generally bundled with some bug fixes and that kind of thing. So. Okay, well, thank you so much. If you have any additional questions, um, please reach out to us. Um, we will have a um, recording of this presentation um, that we will send out to all registrants. So if you have staff members that you want to share with it, um, we will be sending it out. Um, again, if you have any other questions, please let us know. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody, and stay safe.